Here we present a totally stable technique for intracorporeal anastomosis following right hemicolectomy. A 67-year-old man was affected by a transverse colon adenoma with highly suspected endoscopic features. Oncologic workup was negative and a laparoscopic right hemicolectomy was planned. Four ports were used and an old prostatectomy scar was used for specimen extraction. An extra upper right trocar can be optional. The abdominal exploration showed no ascites nor carcinosis. The preoperative tattoo was identified at the level of the proximal transverse colon. A 10 cm distal margin was identified with an hemolock clip. Surgery started at the duodenum according to a bottom up lateral to medial dissection. Surgeon stands between the legs. D2 and the head of the pancreas were carefully dissected. After the right paratocolic gutter was opened using ultrasonic device up to the liver. The hepatic flexure was then taken down, surgeon operating now on the left side of the patient. The vascular approach included ligation and section of the iliocolic and the right branch of the middle colic vessels. Finally, the mesocolon and the, the mesentery were transected with ultrasonic device. Once the distal and proximal margin dissected, two options are available. The anastomosis can be performed after the specimen removal. In this case, the colon and the terminal ileum were transected with the 60 linear stapler introduced via the right lower trocar with the surgeon between the legs. The right hemicolectomy was so completed. After removal of the specimen through a protected suprapubic incision, the pneumoperitoneum was restored and the ileum and colon stumps approximated in an antiperistaltic fashion without any traction. The medial end of both staple lines were excised and the linear stapler inserted through the enterotomies via the right lower trocar and fired. The surgeon was between the legs and the assistant on the left side of the patient. A stay suture was placed to ensure a good traction on posterior and anterior wall of the anastomosis. Finally, the enterotomy was closed with a further 60 blue cartridge, coming this time from the left lower trocar.
An alternative technique allows to perform the anastomosis and the resection simultaneously, decreasing this way the number of stable loads needed. In this case, colon and ileum were approximated without dividing them. Two enterotomies were performed at the level of the future anastomosis. The stapler was then inserted and fired as previously described. Surgeon position and trocar used didn't change. The enterotomy was then closed transversely with a stapler, resecting at the same time proximal and distal margin. Any mesenteric interposition posteriorly was ruled out. And the length of the anastomosis carefully checked. Both procedures were completed with four crotch stitches to avoid any traction on the distal end of the anastomosis. As you can see, the technique is straightforward, with no need for advanced laparoscopic suture skills that makes otherwise this procedure one of the most demanding operations in colorectal surgery. We believe that the anastomosis technique as described could encourage surgeons to add the intercorporeal anastomosis after right hemicolectomy in their clinical practice, offering this way to their patients the well-known benefits associated with this approach. Here we can appreciate the final result with no traction and no twist of the mesentery. Postoperative course was uneventful the patient left the hospital on POD3, pathology showed a PTES adenocarcinoma with 24 lymph node harvested.